Good morning. Since my address to the community last year, much has happened, or nothing has happened, depending on your view of the last six months. Nobody could have imagined that I would be talking to you today from an empty synagogue, where usually I speak to around 2,000 people in person. Today, I'm speaking to a camera and hoping you all hear my message. This has been a year of devastating cruelty. The coronavirus has taken 30 beloved members of our community. Right back at the beginning of lockdown, we lost Rabbi Neil Craft, our friend, mentor, teacher and colleague. We will all miss his wit, his charm, the twinkle in his eye, his ties, the Etrog vodka and much more. Many of you have asked what the shul is planning to remember Neil. Well, as soon as we are allowed, we will, of course, be holding a memorial service. And I'm talking with Susanna about a whole community project in his name. Watch out for announcements in the door door and our week ahead. This was followed too quickly by the passing of Mike Casali, who sat around our council table for many years. He had a rare distinction of having been on the board of three reform synagogues, Edgware, Hendon and Mill Hill. His was a voice of wisdom around our table, and we miss him. His work in the field of interfaith dialogue is his legacy. We also lost our treasurer, Howard Moss, a gentleman who always challenged his colleagues to do the right thing. At honorary officers' meetings, Howard's would be the voice playing devil's advocate and really making us think we were a better team for having him with us. But I know that whether they were part of shawl management systems or committees or not, each of the 30 was a beloved family member, mother, father, husband, wife, brother, sister, son or daughter. I want to take this opportunity of extending my sincere condolences to all who have lost a loved one. May their lives and now their memories be for a blessing. In April, we welcomed Rabbi Debbie Young-Summers to our rabbinic team. Many of you will have met her as a student rabbi at EDRS and when she led services for High Holy Days in previous years. It seems very strange that she has been here since the spring and yet her first time leading an in-person service was the Saturday before Rosh Hashanah. It was quite a moving experience. I want to wish her and her family welcome to the community and hope that she enjoys many more in-person services with the whole community in the future. Last year, I asked if this would be the one when you could do more for the shul. How you have risen to that challenge. From those providing meals to people on the front line or going shopping for isolated neighbours to our wonderful community circles, we hope that we have kept in touch with the majority of our membership. I truly believe that one of the good things to come out of this situation is that we really do have a community where members care for each other. During the course of the past six months, when we have had to turn into an online community, our activities and services have expanded. Apart from our regular classic service, there are now regular parallel services, family services on Facebook, the more informal Babayat service, and much more. There are more opportunities to engage with online talks of the week, schmooze with the rabbis, Talmud classes, Hebrew classes, young adult beer and sheer, young family tea and tot, young parents wine and wine, and much, much more. I am so proud of the way we have adapted and are able to reach out to so many people. I have received messages of support where people are telling me that they have tried new activities for the first time and are really enjoying what is on offer. In fact, one gentleman has liked what he has seen so much that he has joined the synagogue without ever having set foot in it. Over the summer, I was delighted that we were able to open up our nursery and to have some limited activities on site for our summer scheme. It was such a delight to hear children's laughter in the building again. I had hoped that after Yontif, we could open up for more carefully, socially distanced, in-person activities. But as you are all aware, 
due to the new government guidelines, these plans are now on hold. We had hoped to welcome our bar mitzvah classes back to shul on Friday afternoons and our rot on Sunday mornings, but for the moment, these will still be online. But I don't think, in fact, I'm sure that the life of the synagogue is not on hold. We are still a thriving community with so much going on for all age groups. As I look to the future, where I hope we can open up sooner rather than later, my challenge in the coming year is to ask how we can broaden our scope, how the synagogue can become even more of a focus to all age groups. But I want in particular to address that question to the parents of our youngsters, our 40-year-olds out there. Although I hate to say it, I'm rapidly becoming part of the old guard. You will be the ones whose turn it will become to pass on a lively shawl to your youngsters. This year, so many people have stepped up to the various challenges the situation has thrown down. Next year, I want you to become the guardians of our EHRS legacy to pass on to your children. Now is the time to ask yourselves, what kind of a synagogue do I want? And what am I prepared to do to achieve that goal? I wish you all Shana Tova, and most importantly, a healthy new year. Thank you.